welcome back to Soccer Cards United. It's episode 237 of the greatest soccer card podcast in the world. My name is Jason. That's Enzo. Hello, Enzo. Hello, Jason. Um, the first thing people who are watching the video stream will see is that we have the Dublin Card Show website here in front of us. Live and direct. Uh, live and direct. Uh, coming to us to satellite feed. And um, if I am on this Dublin Card Show website right now, DublinCardShow.com, and if you're listening, you can play along uh, on your mobile device while we're doing this. And I go up here to the vendor tables menu item. Previously, that brought me to a mailing list where I could be on the the lookout for vendor tables. But now if I click on this vendor tables link on DublinCardShow.com, I get brought to an Eventbrite page where I can book my tables and display cases and extra vendor attendee tickets for the Dublin Card Show 2025, 1st of March. Wow. 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 Incredible stuff. Tables are live. Tables are now officially live for the Dublin Card Show. Run, don't walk. (laughs) Run, don't walk to DublinCardShow.com and get yourself uh, a table. I'm excited, Jason. Yeah, we so we have it up. Um, it's it's not a lot like it's it's private, so it's behind just the website. If you go on Eventbrite yourself, uh, you won't find it. You need the link. Mm. The link is right. embedded on the website. We put up some images from last year, which is one of the most exciting things I would say about doing a year two of a show. Is that we have material, promotional material, promotional material. Um, this is very exciting. So, like you know, obviously last year uh, the Dublin Card Show was, um was was kind of put on and hosted and, and booked and all that stuff with a relatively short time frame. Yes. Um, I think it was maybe four months from announcement to show. Yeah. This is uh, over six months. Yeah, I would say first, date. first of September will be kind of the, I think the official official, right? Like everything is fully, fully live. Maybe even the attendee tickets. Is that is that the timeline, Jason? That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're so aiming for. That'll be um, a full six months, I believe. Right. So, um, but if you want tables... Um, to come to Dublin, or if you're already in Dublin, and um, you want tables, you go to DublinCardShow.com, and at the moment you click Vendor Tables. Um, this Eventbrite link will be private at some point, so you'll be able to find it on Eventbrite. Or will be sorry, will be public at some point. You'll be able to find it on Eventbrite. It'll probably also be embedded into the website. Am I right in saying that? Yep, I will be embedding that maybe later today. So um, probably by the time you're hearing this, if you go to DublinCardShow.com and just click Vendor Tables without even having to leave the website, you'll be able to book your Vendor Tables. I'm super excited. I'm excited. I, I We obviously wanted to give podcast listeners that little edge. You know, if you're listening yeah. to the podcast and you actually, you're, you're wanting to get a table, you're wanting to come to the show, you use will be getting the kind of early, early access. Early access. Yes. Um, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, we can announce been messaging. Top returning as the head. Top show returning. Yes. So that was very important because we've embedded them into our logo last year and a lot of our promotional material already had that. So thank God for tops for um, following up again and promoting. We yeah. do... I know we have a lot of corporates, Jason, that listen to the podcast as well. You know, when they're on the way to work, they're trying to keep a finger on the pulse in the hobby. So I do want to say to them, sponsorship packages will be going out soon, early September. Uh, so yeah. do not worry. We just have to lock in the headline um, because we obviously don't want to send around a sponsorship package. If the headline is up for grabs, we'd want that inside that package. But it's not up for grabs, which is good for all of our signage and merch. Absolutely. It's our, our graphic designer will thank us uh, for having locked that in. Um, that's a little peek so, behind the curtain, people, for what, what me and Jason get up to when we're not uh, traveling the globe. Yeah. Um, so that like, that's kind of a that's a level of insight that you won't be getting in the mainstream promotion of the Dublin Card Show. No, but because you're a Soccer Cards United um, podcast listener, that's right. You get it. Um, one thing that just, just to say, one thing that does happen sometimes is we've been telling people, you know, on our travels, there's a card show in Dublin. And they go, oh, brilliant! Yeah, do you go to that? And we go, no, no, it's it, we're doing it. We're the ones that do it. And they're like, oh, I didn't know you did that. It's like, what? How could you not know we do that? It's yeah. a Dublin Cards show hosted by, but because we don't put Soccer Cards United anywhere it's, on it. Um, we and there's you know there's a variety of things coming up this year, Jason. That's going to make that even more com- complicated. And I can't. That's a little Easter egg, but people can't know about it. But and I guess you already had that trouble in New York City when we were talking about it to a few people where they were saying, yes. And who who's doing that? And it's like it's us. It's always been us. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna. I don't know what. I don't know if that's a fault of us or the fault of the listener. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing though. Is it good that the Dublin Card Show has grew a life of its own in such a manner that it's kind of disassociated with Soccer Cards United to a degree amongst those I that think are so. not eagle eyed? I, I think so. I, I I like the fact that um, Soccer Cards United we, attend for, the Dublin Card Show as opposed all to all intents and purposes just attend it. Yeah, and we happen to be 
you know, you and I are there in our Dublin Card Show uh, gear. That's right. Working at the Dublin Card Show, but um, yeah, we, Stock Card United is running somewhere else. We're volunteering at the Dublin Card Show. Yeah, I saw Enzo and Jason were lending a hand to the Dublin Card Show guys. That was nice of them. Yeah, fair play. Fair someone play. else was doing their um, someone else was doing their table, but that's that's great. Yes. So um, anyway, just wanted to say there are tables, display cases, and all that kind of stuff ready to go and reserve and to to buy. Uh, for your uh, trip to Dublin in March 1st, 2025 at the Convention Centre. It's a one-day show, and we will have satellite events um, on the Friday evening and um, an after-show event on the Sunday, during the day on Sunday. So if you want to come and hang on the Sunday, you can do that. Um, but details on both of those uh, satellite events will be will be uh, confirmed at a later date. Um, it's very exciting. It's a great way to spend a weekend in Dublin. Um we don't do a two-day show because we want you to have time to fly in and out at your convenience and um, to experience the city when you're here. So um, definitely come if you're thinking about it. Don't think about it. Just do it. We will be having some satellite events. We do, Did we mention that? Like on the Friday, we are... I just, the... I just said that. I literally just said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but the details are TBD. TBD, no doubt. There will be a Friday and a Sunday activity, let's say. Yeah. Um, sorry, Jason. Oh, so I, I got distracted by a message on my phone, which I'm now turning the opposite way. My phone is now. Come on, away. this is podcasting 101. Don't look at your phone while your co-host is talking. The problem is, Jason, there's a lot going on. You know, it's a. It's a we'll we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. All right, Make fine. Sense. Um. So anyway, uh, Enzo's phone aside, the Dublin Card Show is very exciting. It is uh, one of our number one priorities, alongside about ten other number one priorities. That's right. And um, we hope to see you in March in Dublin. Um. Yep. at the if, show if we've not responded to a dm recently um give us a bit of grace that's what i'll say <laughs> we're, we're doing our best would you say that we're doing our best i had, I had yeah. a week or two without a phone and it was a complete nightmare because i forgot mm. it. i forgot it in cleveland i picked it up in in new york city courtesy yeah. of host of the london card show harry so thank you so much harry for that and thank you mm-hmm. to, to william who for who assisted he got it from william got it from cleveland the, the London and Harry got a London to New York for me. So yeah, I appreciate that. But yeah, we are very, and there much- was, by the way, to everyone who's wondering, there was no more efficient way to get something from London to Dublin than to uh, pick it up in New York. That's right. That, I mean, come on. It's, <laughs> there's no way. No, Once you was- get a transatlantic, you do have to send a transatlantic again because there's no easier way to get something from London to checks notes, Dublin. Okay. Yeah. Because we were all going to New York city, Jason. I understand. Not, uh, I, understand. I understand. Don't disrespect me like that. Uh, Let's move on to a very exciting edition of a Soccer Cards United Q&A. Okay. Um, and I want to start over on YouTube. Okay. So we had an episode on Tuesday. This is our first week in a long time doing our new Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it, Jason. We're back. We're back. We're back. Um, so we had a, an episode on Tuesday. If you haven't heard that, it was uh, entitled uh, Dynasty Hits, FIFA Select Checklist, and Fanatics Collect Soccer Sales. So that's the general area that we're in uh, for this kind of uh, thing. And just to go through some YouTube comments, because um, some feedback on some stuff. Uh, first of all, we talked about Wolverhampton and Birmingham City and, and our preference between Wolverhampton and Birmingham uh, in footballing terms and in general terms. But Eamon came in and Eamon said, the best city in the Midlands is Derby or Derby. Um, um, we'll okay. have to drag you over someday to see the Rams. That's right. I'd love to see the Rams. I'd love to see the Rams, Damon. You just let us know when we're going to see the Rams. Who yeah, are when in, and where? Can we get still in League trip? One? I think. Don't don't yeah. insult. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but just to say as well, then Fisker Karma replied to Avon and then said, "Up the Rams. Enjoy the games this okay. year." There's a big Derby County uh, following. Following in Derby the club. soccer United. Derby club, massive club. Um, Romulan says, uh, great commentary as always, Jens. Thanks, Romulan. Yeah, that's nice. That is and nice. then, uh, to me, says, Jason, it is absolutely not nitpicky on the poor design of the Dynasty auto-only cards with the lettering on the right-hand side being okay. blocked by the design. So he's saying, don't... He's supporting you. He's supporting me. He says, it's not nitpicky. It's perfectly legitimate. Yeah, he's saying you're actually bang on. Yeah. I respect um, that. So I appreciate that, Romulan. Okay, then Liren comes in and says, great podcast again. I have to include that just for our own morale. Morale. Because this is it. Like, if you want to keep doing two a week, we need these type, of, these type of comments. Yeah, hype us up, you know? Yeah. Get us ready for Thursday. Let's just go into Thursday and talk yeah. talk our shit. Yeah, some people would say, you can just say the, the feedback part or the question part without including the, the kudos to yourselves. But I'm doing it because, you know, it's, it feels good. Um, as far as I know, says Liren, you only have the UCL winner logo at the season after you win it. 
So last season, Manchester City had it with no number. And two seasons ago, Real Madrid had it with 14. This year, it should be Real Madrid with 15. And the other years, the number will be inside of the UCL star ball. Makes sense. So that 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 clears up some of the, the Champions League patch. It doesn't Confusion. clear up. It doesn't clear up why it's on an off five, or does it? Does it? Yes, it does because in the years you two. don't. There's two, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think so. It's I all know. new. It's new. We're on new. It's new territory. I for it's one, new like, territory. Yeah. I do get to this thing. I think we said it as well last week. It's like they obviously put like as much as it was price crazy or whatever people think whatever, but it's like it's gone to a crazy price now. It's like. A lot of time, effort, and energy went into creating that dynasty in a way that I feel like other soccer checklists or other sets just don't, if you know what I mean. Like, it really, they, they made sure it was match-worn. They were proud about that. They got the on-card autos. You know, they did a few dual autos that they, they were into. You know, like, they really, as far as I see, the, the cases are collated well. You know, you don't really, I don't think, I think there's always kind of been a one big hit, at least in a case. Right. And um, from what I've seen. So, like, it, yeah, I think it was a success. Like they put a lot of time, effort, and energy into it, and they they really shouted about it, of course. But I think it was so far. Yeah, very good. I think so too. And I think somebody's just knocked on my door, and we're back. So sorry about that. Uh, somebody knocked on on my door uh, while I was recording, and I have this on air sign back here. You're very pixelated in my own, Jason. Just to, your video, extremely pixelated. Yeah, I, I can um, see the on air though. I'm clear on my end. And this okay. is recording locally, I believe. So anyway, I have this on-air sign, but it's in it's in here in the studio. It should be outside to say, don't knock. He's on air. But anyway, so Dynasty, I was going to say, um, one second. Oh, my God. You okay? You ran up and down the stairs? I ran up and down the stairs, and I, let's face it, I'm not in a good uh, condition of, of uh, cardiovascular health. But anyway. That's not good. No, it's not good. I was going to say about Dynasty was, Regardless of the qualms you have, I think you've pointed out something very legitimate, which is at least there was a huge amount of time, energy, effort, and care put into it. Two years worth of time, by the way. Yes. Now, some people might say there was a bit too much time put into it. Um, But I do think, like, we do want as many of these kind of, like, highly focused effort soccer sets as we can get. Deliberate. And we can argue over whether or not the results are good, but there are too many soccer sets, I think, that have come out in the past, you know, kind of, say, 10 years, that are kind of like, you can't even really argue about them because um, they haven't really been thrown together with enough intentionality to argue you're about. Saying, you're saying Wayne Bridge popped up in one too many checklists? Yeah, it's just kind of like every time Wayne Bridge is there, it's like, I don't I don't think that I can legitimately criticize you putting Wayne Bridge in there as a choice. I think it's just like as a mistake, as a kind of carelessness, as opposed to like, I really think Wayne Bridge should be in here. I think it's just like, have Wayne Bridge autographs. I'm going to put them in. Yeah. Um, so this is good to see. Even if I do disagree on the autograph only lettering. Design. Thing. Okay. Design. Yeah. Okay. Uh, High Fades says on the last episode, uh, great episode. Ooh. Uh, I think the only way that PSA, oh. or, <laughs> that Fanatics could disrupt PSA is to purchase not CGC, not CSG, but BGS. Oh, what a move that would be, by the way. Heritage. Buying Heritage in the door. Yes, I believe we've. We've talked about this. Um, I think we've said that before ourselves on a previous episode. Yeah, but that is something that you could you could do because you ha- already have all sorts of amazing soccer cards and all sorts of amazing cards in general in BGS it, slabs. Yeah, you'd also have kind of a small collation of hardcore people that have their stuff in their BGS slabs that want BGS to have a resurgence and relevance. Completely. So you immediately have support as well. Yeah, you'd be like, "Get that right. This is class." Like us with our Pele Jason, I'd be saying BGS nine point fives are the premium. Absolutely. They are the standard, as far as I'm concerned. Because, like, you know, we were talking on the, the last show about how CSG, we remember them starting grading sports cards on the show. So it's like, if if you've started your grading company or you've started grading sports cards during the run of Soccer Cards United, you're probably not the heritage brand no, that not Fanatics like, needs to kill PSA. Although, as time goes on, you would be legacy. Do you know what I mean? It's been, it's been a few years. True, Jason. but you have to... It would have you're, to not be, a, you're not Beckett. You're not Dr. You're Beckett. Not Beckett. You're not Dr. Certainly James either. Beckett. Certainly not. Certainly not. Um, and then uh, Sighted Rain doesn't have a question or a feedback, but just says, great shows, fellas. Great show, fellas. Keep them coming. That's kind of feedback. That's co- keep them coming. That's just feedback. feedback. Yeah. I had a, I don't know if that's the last, is that the last of the feedback? That's from the last one on YouTube. Yeah. I was just but about I, to say on Spotify, Soccer oh, United yeah. Podcast has 131 ratings and we mm. are still repping a five-star rating as a podcast. 
So thank you to all 131 people that have done that. If you haven't done that and you are listening on, on Spotify, open that stuff up, hit the star, give it a five. We yeah. appreciate it. That's a number we, we love to see. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, which I know a, a lot of people are as well, sure. um, leave us a rating because it's been a long time since we got a review. A yeah, we haven't wanted to do a review on the show. It's not that we gave up on the segment. We stopped getting reviews. We stopped getting reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll move on to more traditional Q&A now. Okay. Um, we're starting with a uh, question from our friend Faye. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with soccer now having Dynasty, what is your top pick for a product crossing over to a different sport, like a top salad and Ginter for the Champions League or, you know, driver curated sets for F1? So what set would you like to see apply to which sport? A driver curated set in F1 would be fun because I'd like to think they could use a lot, a lot of different cool imagery because they'd have to mm. really think more, I suppose, than they do with like just F1 Chrome. Yeah. Um, so otherwise, every card in the set would look the same. So they'd have to be pulling various images. They probably have a little bit more freedom on it, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. Top of my head, I don't have one beyond that, I, Jason. But I think that front, just in terms of driver curated sets, someone like Fernando Alonso could do an excellent driver curated set because he's so old. That's right. So like he, he like Fernando Alonso's career, like would have, you know, would be incredible. I would, um, agree. I would say an inception. Maybe for for F one. Now I'm in like F one head. Faye has forced me into into F one. I'm not thinking soccer. Yeah. What have they done elsewhere that I'd love to see in soccer? I don't know. I don't know either. Um, because we've seen like now that we have Dynasty, we've seen these, and we know we're getting uh tops oh. bold. Um, so the high end thing, you know, I think we've seen most of the high end stuff uh, in soccer. Maybe a transcendent Champions League. Because the Transcendent sets have come to soccer, but they've been club exclusive. So like Bayern, mm. Salzburg, Transcendent, which I think is just not for me. A yeah. Transcendent Champions League, I think would be crazy. That's right. That's what I'll say. Crazy. Oh, wow. That big fancy box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or for Panini to bring back Flawless. Give us Flawless. Another another Flawless. That's right. Um, I'm just looking. Do you know what I'm looking at here? I'm looking at uh, Tomp's Big League Baseball. Um, and I not necessarily want big league baseball and soccer, but I do think there's a few things Tops do. I was kind of thinking of the Allen and Ginter line. Yeah. Tops been making baseball cards for so long and they make so many different sets. And some of them are kind of just like a bit of silliness, a bit of like, you know, a bit of fun, a bit of just kind of novelty, cheap kind of stuff. Um, I would like to see that for soccer, just kind of more get a bit silly creative enough. with it, get a bit silly with it sometimes. Um, like the, the anime set that they kind of put out that was kind of a top to nail vibe, if they made a full box of anime style cards, mm. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. I also think like Composite, which is coming out, Composite Football, which I think is the first time the Composite brand has showed up. I would like that in soccer if they fleshed it out a bit more. So basically, Composite, for anyone that doesn't know, is similar vibes to Chronicles that like there's different brands in the box. So, you know, yeah. you can get your Tops Chrome. But like right now, I think it's Tops Chrome, Tops Chrome Black, and Tops Finest. So I think that's not. Maybe it's like. A lot of the Tops cards are very similar. That's why I'm not like amazed by it. Like the difference between Tops Chrome and Tops Chrome Black and Tops Finest, I'm kind of like, they're kind of all Chromium style. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, the, I think the Olympic set, maybe you were able to hit Dynasty cards in that and stuff like that. Like there was a wow. real weird vibe to it. So like, I want that kind of mix mash of Tops brands in one box. That would be cool. For mm. soccer. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking about uh, Panini Chronicles um, soccer. And one of the things about Panini Chronicles soccer is that like you get, cards in it that don't appear outside of uh chronicles and which is fun you know you hit like a dinagon but there's no there's no panini soccer dinagon box out there but like you can hit a gold standard obviously in 2019 there was gold standard then they didn't make it again but they threw it into into in Chron chronicles, chronicles which is yeah. fun like I, yeah. i'd like to see that with tops like, i don't know like if you look at bundesliga there's no more bundesliga museum but if there was like a composite bundesliga where you could hit random beautiful museum cards in it that'd be clever mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good. Um, I think to your point about the the tops uh, composite and like kind of putting in three tops brands that we all kind of know and that we're all familiar with and that get released anyway, that definitely has less of an appeal than the like you're saying, you know, you hit a gold standard or something, um, yeah. you know, or like again, just thinking of Panini brands that they don't do anymore uh, for soccer, like a noir or a um, black gold or anything like that, you know, yeah. um, where you kind of go, ooh, that's nice, yeah, unreal, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, I suppose if you're getting, you know, what did you say? It was Chrome, Chrome Black, Black, Black Chrome and, and Finest. I'm yeah, pretty I mean, sure that's the three. Yeah. It's like Black Chrome shouldn't really exist. Finest is bad enough when it comes out by itself. Yeah. And Chrome, like we have Chrome. What are we talking about? We have about? Chrome. Yeah. So I think there, there's more room to improve there, is the, is the feedback we've landed on. That's right. 
Yeah, because even like Panini have like Obsidian, like they have like they, there's very distinctly different. I don't know if Tops have that. They have obviously Museum mm. Dynasty, but like Pristine. Yes. Mm. Yes. We've such a, I think soccer is just kind of pristine has ruined it. Like Euro Pristine kind of has damaged the pristine brand, I think, in a big way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For soccer among soccer collectors. That is something I would like to I would like you know, the kind of match of product to, to sport. Uh, if anyone has any ideas on that, write in and tell us. Because I'd like to hear yeah. feedback um in the Spotify comments or the YouTube comments or whatever. Okay, Bren, Brendan. Brendan says we always hear how guys are, quote, hobby dead after an undesirable transfer or a lower level loan. Uh, but guys like Cole Palmer and Javi Siemens have come back from the dead, if you will. Any transfers that brought guys back onto your radar, my first thought was maybe Francisco Concesau. Well, Enzo, I have one for you right off the top of my head, which I know you uh, may be a big fan of. Is it the nice one? It's not the nice one. Okay. It's Federico Chiesa, who yeah. I know you like to talk about when we're doing Italy previews. Uh, moving to Liverpool apparently for 25 million euros yeah I was hearing the, the the fee was smaller than that believe it or not I was hearing 15 million so I don't know wow. where sources might be wired but um, that's scary I mean I don't know I don't really know like I think in if they signed him after the euros he would have been 100 million plus probably um, yeah. back in 2020 I mean 2020 euros um, which explains won. why they didn't sign him after the euros for sure but I'm saying like if they sign him at that point and Klopp is the manager I think it's an electric signing I think he's an electric player I think everything's great um, at the moment, he's more so injury prone. Juventus are happy to have got rid of him. Absolutely. A lot of people said, "Don't let the door hit you on the way out." Are oh, you struggle to see where he's going to fit in? You still have your Mo Salah, you still have your Luis Diaz. Just, like, Liverpool have a lot of options, but yeah, it's definitely a low risk financial signing. Yeah. It's definitely a good squad player for the cups and stuff like that. And he has obviously that potential of reigniting kind of where he left off back in the day. So it's a signing as an Italian. I'm excited for him as someone that doesn't love Liverpool. I'm not like ecstatic that he's going to be in a Liverpool kit. Same way I'm not ecstatic that Calafiori is in an Arsenal kit. But I do like seeing Italians in the Premier League, even though historically they haven't quite been able to adapt to it. Yeah, I think in terms of someone being hobby dead, Federico Chiesa obviously has a rated rookie 2018-19. Oh, yeah. um, Don Ross. And so this is the kind of thing we see a lot where this is definitely a selling window for Federico Chiesa. I'm sure some people have gone out and got um, like a couple of, um, you know, I'm sure uh, Mikel Marino just moved to Arsenal. I'm sure some of his Real Sociedad uh, Chrome autographs, you know, a couple of them moved and stuff like that. So I think these transfers tend to be, they represent selling windows as opposed to long-term resurgences in uh, players' prices. We just sold a one-of-one -one Carnival, Evan Nielsen. Yes. I believe he's just moved to the Premier League. To Bournemouth, yeah, that's right. So someone was making a play there and bought that, which I was very happy with. Yeah. Um, obviously, you were talking about Nice there. Uh, Yusuf Makoko just moved to Nice, um, and he's been around for a long time, uh, kind of languishing at Dortmund. Yeah, four years. Um, and then again, you, you you kind of wonder what you know what would he do at Nice to, to move the prices? We don't know. But he, the important thing is that he plays, I suppose. Yeah, I think he's young enough that it's all about game time. Um, yeah. Fascinating, but it, it's weird because normally Dortmund is where you get that, if you know what I mean. Like, that's like... yeah. Was he too young when he first broke out at Dortmund, had to actually wait and whatever? Like, was he being managed mm. well at Dortmund? Who knows? We know, the only thing we know about him is that underage German uh, national team football, he's a bit of a whiz. So can he do it in the French League? Probably can. Look. We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, I was just kind of thinking of other examples, like of, you know, kind of like if this person had had a rookie card and then like, you know, the, the big example I thought of was Harry Kane. And Harry Kane, oh. of course, famously came through at Tottenham, didn't get any game time and then had to go out on loan to three or four Hard. different clubs. Norwich, Leicester, uh, MK Dons at one point, maybe. I'm not sure. I think so, yeah. Um, so it went and played in the lower leagues. If, uh, you know, say in Topps Chrome had been, Topps Chrome Premier League had been back then, um, in 2009, maybe 2010, 2011, um, and Harry Kane had, had, they'd snuck him in as a rookie card because there's a striker coming in uh, from, uh, from Spurs. And then he had a rookie card and then he'd gone out on loan. His cards would have just been put away. They would have been worth essentially nothing. And then when... I can't remember who it was that got, uh, got injured. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Oh, it's... Uh, was it the Spanish it, fella? Yeah, yeah. Um, Soldado. Yes. Yeah. Roberto Soldado got injured and Harry Kane had to come on and that was the that was the end of that. That was Harry Kane just played then for Spurs for the rest of the time until he moved to Bayern Munich. So I think like 
traditionally we always talked about in football like that strikers hitting their peak between the ages of kind of 27 and 31 32 that was kind of five years um this kind of youth obsession in soccer is relatively new True. um and no one would be expecting under you know 20 years ago no one would be expecting yusuf makoko to be any good until he had kind of 10 years playing under his belt definitely so that's um something to think about yeah it, as we say like it's football is non-linear it can yeah. be a positive thing like it can be a positive thing not to peak early. You know, you look yeah. at maybe M- Michael Owen peaked early. I would say Rashford peaked early. I think he's kind of on a decline now as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think you see a lot of that. So football is interesting in that way. And I'm excited to see the first person who has a one-of-one rookie card that has kind of a, a few years in the wilderness and then explodes. That would be Bam. fascinating. Bam, it out of nowhere. Yeah. It'll be fascinating to see that. Come we do have, I don't want to spend much time on it, but Mason Greenwood is obviously also in the French League Scored a few goals, yeah. you know. Obviously, super controversial. So totally, there he's in the wilderness for different reasons. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily invest in buying, but you could use that as an example of a rated rookie that exists. Does the move and actually playing and trying to move past the the mess? Does that help us cards? Whatever. Like, is are we going to see a market change there? We probably will. And mm-hmm. um, would we recommend it? Would we go near it ourselves? Obviously not. But it's just another example of players that could literally disappear for two or three years make a transfer, and then suddenly kind of be hitting headlines and, and people talking about it. Obviously, different scenario with him. but um, Yeah, I mean, I mentioned on Tuesday, Antonio Nusa, who was playing a uh, Norwegian kid, very highly rated, playing at Bruges, now he's gone to Orbi Leipzig. Um, if he was to do well in the Bundesliga, and then maybe, you know, say someone like Bayern Munich goes, all right, Harry has two or three years left in him, let's sign Antonio Nusa, because Leipzig finished second this year, or whatever. Um, and he has... But it's all just about time. It's all just about the time. I do think as well, like I would rather have a thing in soccer where like players come out, their rookie cards are expensive, then they go into the wilderness and then some of them then reappear later on as opposed to that Michael Owen thing of, you know, if Michael Owen came on the scene, everyone spends incredible amounts of money on, I suppose Ansu Fati is a much lower grade example. Um, And then he just, you know, dies off completely. That's like, that's That's a no-win scenario for anyone. In fairness, Michael Owen, you'd imagine if he had rookies, people would still... Because he's still revered as a legend, you know, regardless. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mohamed Salah would be a good example of someone yeah. who would have back in the day popped up, moved to Chelsea, go in the wilderness for a while, and then have a big, big, big resurgence when he goes to Liverpool. Kevin De Bruyne, is, is yeah. just speaking of Chelsea. Come on. Um, so this stuff does happen. Um, Lukaku used to be in that same tier, but for whatever reason, he he's become a meme. Like, he's an all-time yeah. scorer at various clubs and national day, but he's a meme. So, unfortunately. He's off to Napoli with Scott McTominay. Really? Yes. Does that mean so, Osman's out the door? Uh, Osman looks like he's going to Saudi Arabia, yeah. Saudi? Yeah, because nobody will pay him the salary that he requires. Um, and so and Nap- he, Napoli will sell, is that the idea? Napoli will sell, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because I think... Luka- with, with, huh? Lukaku, Osman front two would be, you know, give, give us a little four four two vibe with, with Cavara on the wing. It would be very old school, very dangerous. It would have been, but uh, Osman and his agent, I think, got a little bit, uh, a little bit big for the boots, That's right. and um, didn't want to take a hit on salary to move up, and kept saying, "I'm not going to Saudi, I'm not going to Saudi," and then eventually realized that's the only people were going to pay him the money, and so went to Saudi. Okay, damn. So, uh, I mean, he hasn't gone yet, but it, it's looking like he's gone. So, okay, okay, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll I keep suppose an eye on Chelsea, many players to buy him, they can't. Uh... Yeah, well, they're looking at Ivan Tony. Which, in fairness. For 50 million. So, and then, uh, yeah. Anyway, we can talk about Chelsea-related transfers all day because there's so many of them. Right, let's get on to more questions. Um, Soccer Cards HQ has a question for us. Um, If you could only buy cards from one set for the rest of time, what set would it be? What is your Desert Island set? So when he says set here, if we say Top Scrum, does that mean every year we can buy Top Scrum or is he saying a specific year, specific set? I'm going to interpret it as a specific brand perpetually. Okay. You can always buy the new release of it. Because Top Scrum was where my mind went to first as well. Because I suppose if you were, you know, if you could only collect Top Scrum UCC every year. You're all right. You're all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I was thinking that, like, if it was specific set, I'd probably say 2014 Prism World Cup. Because I feel like mm. anytime something pops up, you'll have a bit of fun. You'll have a, you'll have a good time. But if it's, one brand, I mean, it's hard to look past Top Scrum, UCC. Yeah. You know, yeah. Stadium Club, you could say that. You could say Merlin. You know, you can 
have a bit of fun with those, but it does feel like ultimately maybe Sapphire. There you go. Champions League, UCC Champions Sapphire. League. Yeah. That's me. Um, let me think. You're going Champions League. I'll tell you what I'll go. Sapphire. I'll go, just yeah, based on what, what you said, World Cup Prism. Okay. Panini but Prism. But you can buy that every year. I can buy it every four years. And in the meantime, I can me. spend the four years collecting the set. That's right. That, that, that's strong. That's a strong answer, I think. Yeah, um, I'll give you that. Yeah, so Sapphire UCC for you and Panini Prism World Cup for me. For me, Euro Pristine. All day. It's got to be. It's got to be it's Euro gotta Pristine. Be. The only answer. Um, so there we go. Yeah, I suppose. Because there are people who only collect one set. Yeah, and they're smarter than us. I mean, they're smarter than us, yeah. We're running around trying to grab, catch them all. <laughs> okay. We're the wrong, we're the wrong uh, category here. Yeah. Uh, maybe people at home are like, catch them all. What's that? I don't know what that is. Mad City Collector asks this. Um, Mad City Collector, by the way, a, a set collector of some note and a, a focused collector who we could all learn a lesson from. That's right. People are spending a lot of money on Lamine Yamal cards. Do you see anything different in him than any other, uh, any of the other hot prospects that we've seen in the last five years? What is your favorite rookie card of his, given that, he is, given that he's in so many products? What are the odds of him winning the Ballon d'Or in the next 10 years? What odds do you give him? So let's look, let's, let's break that up. Um, do you see anything different in Lamine Yamal that you haven't seen in other prospects over the last five years? Yes. Tell us what that is. I just, when I'm watching him play, I feel like he has a lot more composure than most players. Always has that. Like, it's his, his goals don't impress me that much. His assists do. That's what I was okay. saying. Okay. Yeah. So, um, compared to someone like uh, Jamal Musiala or... Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, feel like, not... I feel like Yamal at full pace or when he's running up the right hand, it feels like it's everything's a bit slower. Mm -hmm. yeah. He looks up, he's able to actually look around and he makes the right pass. So, in that case, I will give him that. I know what you're saying, Yamal... Bellingham's been great, but there's something when I do watch him, it is a bit different. At least it yeah. wasn't the Euros. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Uh what do we see? I mean, I think like obviously a lot of this is predicated on the fact that Spain won the Euros. Mm -hmm. Um, and he played really well in that tournament. Um, I think like the if we're talking about a young player like that, the obvious comparison probably is Mbappe. Um, you know, winning a major tournament with your country very, very young. Um being a, a kind of superstar at a top club um, and like Mbappe will probably go the first you know few years of his career without uh, winning the Champions League um, but I do I do think as well it's just a, a more focused soccer market I think I think market conditions have a lot to do with Lamine Yamal more than the player himself um, he's obviously brilliant like I um, don't know who they were playing the other night but I watched him and he's really good um, but then Danny Olmo came on and Danny Olmo was really good you know, like that. It was not. It wasn't like you know. It wasn't that kind of thing of like. There's I mean, him out, there's everybody else. Yeah. Um. I have a question for you, Jason. Mm. If Leo Messi burst onto the scene this day and age, when he did, yeah. he had Ronaldinho on the team. He was kind of had a bit part to play at the very start, but he looked fairly electric. Yeah. If he had rookie cards that were going for forty k, what would what would you be feeling? What would you be thinking at that time? Obviously, it's hard to. Yeah. Would you be kind of going relax, lads? Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that that would be a lot of the market center would have been, he's all, he's all need to relax. Yeah, I mean, like, you, know, you don't know really, do you? Like, because in, in saying that, I think, I think the conditions at Barcelona when Leo Messi came through were very different. Like, they, they were kind of a situation where with that Barcelona are in there, which is like, the team is kind of in a transitionary period. We don't really know. Um, this kid's good, but is he going to have the team around him and all this stuff? Then Pep Guardiola comes in and it's like, okay, now we're kind of putting the pieces together. Busquets gets called up, you know, that's one thing I was thinking about. This obviously made me think about Messi, this question. And just like the fact that Messi happened to play with a series of incredible teams and incredible teammates. Um, and if you want to look at how sensitive Messi was to the team around him, look at his record with Argentina pre-2022 World Cup or pre-2021 Cup America, whatever it is. Um, and it's it seems like, is Lamine Yamal ever going to have the players around him that Messi had? That, that seems unlikely. Yeah. Um, and you think of how much of Messi's prices are built on his relationships with other great players in those teams. Um, you know, is Iniesta, is Jordi Alba responsible for 0.5% of, of Messi's prices? I think so. You know. Um, and he does too, bringing them to the Miami. 
And obviously Messi does too. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, in, in this, me and Leo are completely... Uh, aligned. Completely aligned. Yeah. Uh, this the, um, many other things. Your favourite Yamal card, Jason, of his rookies. I don't know if I have one. I don't know if I have one either. Um, I suppose... It's- Kabooms are pretty good, but like uh, I wouldn't have that as my favor. If the yeah. gold kaboom was really gold, I'd had feel different. I think maybe, and I know we we've talked about the national debut thing, but I think his Euro, his actual proper Euro cards. So Euro Chrome when it comes out. Euro Chrome Spain Super Factor it will be quite that, the card. Yeah, I think that's quite the card. I think that's the that's the card. Fair. I think that's fair. I'd, I'd agree with that. Especially if like the image is going to be him in the 19 jersey, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That'd be unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and then what odds do we give him to win the Ballon d'Or in the next 10 years? Decent odds. De- decent odds. We don't know. It's an open field from now yeah, on. Yeah, it's going to be very different. No one's going to know. It's different. Yeah. Um, it's a new, whole new world. That's right. Okay. Uh, Rob has a question for us. Are you of the opinion that cards other than short print, super short print, numbered, and autos will be worth next to nothing and that we're in a junk wax era for quote-unquote normal cards? Does that basically mean base cards and base inserts that are not SP, essentially? Base cards, base inserts, refractors, um, yeah. unnumbered, unnumbered, not short print stuff. I mean, probably. You know. I don't think that stuff's meant to have value. I think that's basically where we've kind of fallen. Yeah. It'll have transactable value between kids and, you know, people that kind of do dollar boxes set, and stuff like that. Set collectors but like, and things, yeah. Yeah, set collectors for sure. But it's like, it's not, I suppose the idea is they're not meant to be worth. You're not no, meant to grade a base card and make money, really, as an investment. No. I, I mean, obviously, like, people, you know, I was going to say that while we had that kind of stuff was worth money in soccer, other sports with much bigger print ones didn't. But I'm, I'm thinking now of, like, you know, people grading base, uh, Luca. Yeah, uh, yeah, rookies yeah. in basketball and stuff so i guess people and i know like Wemby had a lot of base cards graded this year and stuff so true i mean the psa 10 of the right player will be worth a bit of something but like it's oh, not yeah 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 it's kind of like the sticker vibe but it's like yeah the 10 will be worth more than the base but it's still not that there's yeah. a roof on where it can go yeah but i think that's that's the new age um are we in are we in a junk wax here for normal cards i think I don't think we're in a junk wax here because, as we're saying, like there's numbered, there's autos, and so yeah. the, ju- the junk wax doesn't refer to cards. Junk wax refers to packs and boxes being worth because yeah. there's nothing in them. Um, yeah, there's, no matter how many you open, you'll like, you could open a million boxes of junk wax arrow wax and never hit something of any note. Whereas that's not the case today, regardless of how many. Yeah, how the, they print. the sealed wax itself will maintain value because you don't know because there is kind of guaranteed or or average they. Uh, hits in them. So I don't think we're in a new junk wax here. I think we're in something a lot more dangerous. <laughs> um, okay. M Laws Sports asks, what are your thoughts on certain big rookie chases being flooded in products? Do you think it's more important that the market prices of the big rookies are upheld through limited supply, even if that makes them quite inaccessible to collectors of their respective teams? Will the amount of base auto rookies in different products now mean that in the future they aren't particularly sought after? So this is the same anxiety, by the way, as the last question. Yeah, people are getting concerned. Yeah. Uh, now mean that in future they aren't particularly sought after compared to the older rookies who may have only been in a couple of sets and are therefore quite desirable. Yes. I think yeah. you're... Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, it's just all... It's kind of just exp- kind of ever-expanding. You know, the pyramid... The, the, is is growing and so the, the the layers of the pyramid are also growing you know it's obviously like rob's question was like everything other than autos and numbered cards this this question is kind of like even more dramatic is like even the even the numbered the, the kind of high numbered autos and stuff are they going to have any value um who knows who knows i do think obviously like we're talking about finest and chrome and, and all that stuff um there is part of me that wishes that some rookies would only have autographs in certain products. And I don't just mean kind of coincidentally or like because Merlin comes out at the end of the season or whatever like that. I mean, like specifically, like there's only going to be, we're only going to put him in this product. Um, but then say Lamine Yamal, if you don't put him in. Finest. Finest. How are you going to, why is anyone going to buy Finest? Yeah, it's tough. Um, so it's very tough. Yeah. I don't I think it, it would take a require, uh, it would take a, a level of, resistance and restraint to, to actively have his autos, actively have the license to produce him. It's his rookie year and decide he's not going in a product that you're also trying to sell. Mm. I, I don't see it happening, like, ever. I think you just have to... But it's, it's kind of where you, like, collect what you like. Do you like the look of finest? No, don't... Then neglect it. Don't don't get involved with those yeah. cars. You know, like, collect what you want. Because, like, 
everything feels dramatic in an echo chamber. Like I feel in 2020 and 2021, we felt like there was like Jude had more rookies than any player ever in the history yes. of ever for soccer. But nowadays, if you want to find like an off 25 Jude rookie autograph, they're just not they're not plentiful. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard. So this is the time you can make Yamal rookies. Panini and Tops are doing it with a variety of licenses, including the Euro license, FIFA license, all that, La Liga, yep. Champions League. But in five years' time, a Yamal rookie can't be made. And what's been made this year is what exists. And obviously the question is, is there going to be so much that there's just piles of it? But I, I don't imagine there is. Like I suppose the, the hope is the demand goes up high enough that a lot of the low-hanging fruit gets taken off the board and it just becomes harder to attain. Yeah, I mean, I think you've you've hit there, which is we, we often have these um, supply side concerns. Are they making too much? Are they? And the thing we we don't see is because we see the supply growing. That's, you know, that that's kind of publishable. Uh, we don't see the demand growing in, you know, like it's not like every, every hundred new collectors come in and have a press conference and say, we weren't in the hobby six months ago and now we are. So we're not really seeing, but we, we know kind of just anecdotally, we know implicitly we can see from different things that the market is growing. And one of the reasons why, if, if only the people who were worried about Jude rookie numbers were still here, then the Jude rookie numbers would be a problem. But in the meantime, loads of other people have come in and want a Jude rookie and can't have it because they weren't here the first time. That's right. So, you know, in, in those five years, presumably we'll keep growing the market. That's the hope. That's what I suppose, that's what the manufacturers are hoping. Yeah, that's the great hope. Yeah. Whether or not it happens, we will wait and we will see. Mm. But I, mm. I see a lot of good signs for Chase, and I'll say that. So do I. Yes, certainly. We wouldn't still be sitting here twice a week sometimes. Certainly, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, um, unless we unless we we thought this was, you know, going like that. That's right. Okay. Um. Right. I'm gonna. St- we have one more rookie related question. I'm gonna get into that just because I want to kind of close that chapter. Why do rookie cards of players drop so much in their sophomore, very very Americanized, in their second year uh, for our global listeners? Uh, why do RC cards of players in sophomore year drop so much in value, Alejandro Garnacho, etc.? I suppose there's less attention, there's less hobby attention on them for being a rookie chase, and if they're not subsequently performing out on the field, yeah, they're what. Whereas it's the demand, you know, the demand has there's waned. New rookies, because if you look at Jude, like his maybe his sophomore year was probably not that great, but now he's in demand and stuff like that. So it's kind of, I suppose, when you're in the echo chamber of a rookie season, there is a lot of hobby talk and that's because a lot of people have wax a lot of people have hits that they've just hit from breaks and whatever and want to hype up a player yeah and um, there's more attention on everything that player does anytime they play a game and then the following year people are looking at and paying more and more and more attention to the rookies in that chase class that if the previous year's rookie isn't doing a madness it's a lot less attention on it i would imagine yeah and 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 also rightly the standards for being impressed become higher the more you play Mm-hmm. Um, and what's more, more data you know, yeah if your man um, plays for a full year now and doesn't do anything it's not because it's a sophomore year it's because we've just seen him do nothing for 30 games yeah and and we've seen we've also seen like stuff that's impressive when you're a rookie we look at it and go oh my god imagine that he's just this is his first game and he's going you know okay you've done that now what have you done for me lately kind of thing yeah. um which is which i suppose is why there's like a rookie of the year and a player of the year two separate awards in a lot of leagues and um, because the rookie wouldn't be able to win player of the year because it's only impressive because he's a rookie. That's right. No, me. Um, yeah. So I also think that does link into, if I can try and remember, the hobby, the hobby dead players. Um, we often see that starting in their, in their sophomore year to use the, use the term. And, uh, and then they have to kind of, com- they have to then perform over a consistent basis for us to pay attention anymore. Yeah. Uh, so there is a, a link there between the, the questions okay um our Eamon is back in on a different platform okay and he wants to know are you guys going to start breaking who knows who knows who knows who knows we get that quite yeah. we'll say this we get that question a lot we get it we get it a lot we have i would say we have 99.9 percent of the infrastructure to do it yes um i would say start breaking We've broke before. I'll say that much. People that really know know two two case mm. breaks have been done over the course of the Soccer United uh, history by ourselves for Formula One Chrome and EPL Select uh, Garnacho yep. Rookie Year. Um, are we going to start it on a regular and consistent basis and do some madness in this Soccer United studio? 
perhaps, perhaps we might. Who knows? Yeah, who knows, people? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? It's a packed field right now. Soccer breaking. No doubt about it. Um, and that doesn't go, that doesn't go unnoticed uh, by us. Um, and so you know, it, it, there's a lot to think about. But uh, we get asked that question a lot. We have both before. Yeah, if we decided to launch, you know, soccer is not a break or something along those lines, I do think a lot of your favorite breakers wouldn't be pleased. Yes. Yeah. And that's it not disruptive. That's not to be say disruptive. We'll, we'll come in and, and you know. Um, no, not but, at all. I'm not saying we're eating everyone's dinner. I'm just saying, I think, I don't know. I feel like I've met almost every soccer breaker ever, you know, and yes. I feel like I would be stepping in and on their toes, regardless of how big or small we went doing it. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, so basically, uh, but that wouldn't stop us. By the way, I'm just uh, you're saying you're a saying few friendly would be, conversations. It, would be a it would stop a few. Yeah, it would be a consideration. It would stop a few friendly. A few yeah. friendly conversations would be less friendly. I would imagine. Yeah, um, and not in a negative way on part of that breaker or whatever. I just think it changed. You know, you're not just the Irish guys who do a podcast. You become a you break as well. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all right, relax. We're all here, we're all friends. Yeah. But uh, it wouldn't stop me. It wouldn't stop me. I don't know these people personally, really. Okay. Um, so, Eamon, you take from that what you will. Eamon, I know, but uh, Eamon obviously is an Irish listener. Um, we've seen a lot of Irish breaks kind of popping up recently, you know, one yeah. box breaks and various people doing it. So that's also a consideration for us. Like, we're not, we don't want to necessarily step on that in our local market because we do mm. think that's going to help grow the Irish hobby. I think we're seeing it in front of our eyes. So that is definitely something we look at as well. I know Eamon is like eager. I know for a fact he'd be eager to join a break. Yes. He'd be excited about it. So it is a... This is kind of a self-interested question here from Eamon. He's trying to pop us up and he's trying to get us to do a kind of thing. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Yeah, but yeah. in general, yeah, we're doing 101 things at the moment. So yeah. if we launch it, we want to launch it right. We want to make sure that we're going to be doing it properly. Um, so for now, we're just... Perhaps working. a live break from Pride Park where Eamon's beloved Derby County play. That's right. That's on the future of Docket. Yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, Rippin Dodgers has a question for us. Okay. A baseball related question. Oh, I seen this one. I did see this. Um one. on the last uh the last episode we talked about did we prefer Molyneux, where Wolverhampton Wanderers play, or did we prefer um St. Andrews where Birmingham City play? And this time we're going stateside. Do you prefer Enzo? Progressive Field where the Cleveland Guardians play, or City Field where the New York Mets play? Progressive Field. Yeah. I had yeah. a better time there. Obviously, it's in a city center. You know, it's in... I didn't, like, just commuting to City Field was a nuisance for me in New York. Obviously, mm-hmm. that, that New York traffic, everyone, what about that? Yeah. Um, I definitely indulged in the food more at City Field. I had a really nice hot dog. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I had some Brooklyn Lager, which made me very happy. But in general, I just loved the, the experience of walking straight into a stadium and just kind of being in amongst the vibes, walking straight out, getting to watch the end of the game because I wasn't concerned about traffic exiting because I was able to just walk to my hotel. So, like... You know, some of the factors that make me say progressive field are um are, are based on on, are based on, on external, your own kind of kind of factors. external factors. Yeah. Ultimately that comes down to its location. So it's all about progressive field and, and my beloved guardians and Stephen yep. Juan and our closer uh, class A or class E or whatever his name is, yeah. working. We didn't get to see the closer at City Field. So that and and the reason we left early is because we don't want to be stuck in New York traffic for ten hours. So therefore mm. progressive field for me every day. Was there the with the Mar we saw obviously we saw the Guardians win. And we it might not have been a closer. Is that what you're saying? Lose. Yeah, I don't know how that's only a closer if the game is like set to be closed. I don't know. See, we don't know, and, don't know. and the reason we don't know is because City Field is is not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I chose my my hat for this episode based on my answer to that question. Wow. Um, which is it's got to be the Cleveland Guardians uh, progressive field for me, and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. As Enzo said, City Center location. Um, I think a lot of people. Um, around the world will attest that a city center sports ground is is one of the peak experiences for a sports fan. Um I would say smaller, which I enjoyed, more more kind of like uh I don't know, more intimate in a certain way. Um you felt you're closer to the action. More of a family experience. More of a family experience. Um I just enjoyed it more. It was more I would say it was more wholesome experience at Progressive Field than it was at City Field. City Field is is kind of like we were kind of walking around going, this is amazing. Look at yeah. all this stuff they have here. Look at all this kind of big stuff they're doing. But for me, as I'm, I'm just there to watch the baseball. You know, you're a baseball. I'm, not, man. I'm a baseball guy. I'm not there to join in Billy Joel karaoke. I'm there to oh. watch Stephen Kwan do what he does. Yeah. Um. So it's got to be a uh, progressive field and the Cleveland Guardians uh, for us. That definitely. That's a good yeah. note to end on. 
Okay, um, so we're back on Tuesday with another episode of Soccer Cards United, and um, we're going to build up a head of steam, I believe, in the next few months on the podcast. That's right. If you want that Dublin Card Show vendor table, hit it, hit it, hit it on the website dublincardshow.com. Yep. Uh, attendee tickets will be live soon enough. Um, and other than that, go Guardians. That's right.